Hey guys, Christy here from The Silva Life and welcome back to our channel. I'm super excited to go through this video today on how to automate your client experience in HoneyBook. As a HoneyBook Pro, the number one thing we get when clients come to us inquiring about our services is, I know HoneyBook can do so much, but I don't even know where to start. So if you are there, please know this is so so common and I hope this video just gives you such a better idea of the power that HoneyBook has to automate your client experience. So before we dive into the actual meat of this video, I want to talk about something important. But before you automate anything in HoneyBook, the first step is actually mapping out your client experience. Now this is an entire process we go through with our custom HoneyBook Build clients. And if that's something you're interested in, I'll make sure to link our contact form below because this is what we love doing with our client is sitting with them in our workflow mapping session and talking about their client journey from the moment they inquire, going through their entire project to the moment they send that closeout testimonial request email. So I definitely wanna give you a ton of tips and tricks that help guide you through that process in this video today. But if you're feeling like you really just need that additional support, know that we are here for you when you need it. Okay, so you hear a lot about automation, workflows, client journey, and I don't want you to get overwhelmed by all those terms out there. I wanna talk about what your client journey actually is. So like I said, it's thinking about what your client experience is from the moment they inquire to when they sign that proposal to going through the process of working with you and then finally closing out their project. So I'm just gonna go through a few things to get your wheels turning and then we'll dive into how to actually put these into HoneyBook. So let's start with the workflow mapping process. Think of the second your potential client inquires to work with you. What do you want to happen? Do you want them to be sent a service brochure? Now that service brochure could have your prices because maybe you don't wanna showcase them on your website or maybe you wanna hide the prices because you wanna make sure you get them on a call first before they may get sticker shock. In that email where you deliver the brochure or maybe you don't, do you wanna have a link to schedule a call with you? After you send that brochure and the call scheduler or whatever version of that you decide you wanna do, do you wanna have any follow-up emails after you send in case they ghost? It's not a bad idea if you ask me. Then you wanna think, okay, when you deliver that proposal, you wanna map out the next steps. What's gonna happen for them when they sign? Do you have to send a welcome email? Maybe you have to send something like a questionnaire or a style guide. Now, this is gonna be completely unique to you, your business, your process. So I really want you to think of what feels good for you as you're considering these questions. Then you wanna think of during the project process, is there any checkpoints where you have to check in? Do you wanna send any hype emails? Maybe it's seven days before their project or a day before their photo shoot. And then after you have this session, the photo shoot, you kick off the project. Are there any emails after that that you want to keep them in the loop of what's happening during the process? All the way until you finish their project and say, okay, thank you so much. You are the best client ever. Can you leave me some feedback? Whether you link a questionnaire or you put your Google business link, maybe the knot or wedding wire. There are so many steps that you can actually automate of this through HoneyBook. And then some really awesome tips that I want to give you that also allows you to put in personal details because what I will say is canned emails are amazing but there's nothing like that personal touch so with that let's dive in So I know in the beginning of this video, I already chatted about just some tangible examples of what automating your client experience can look like, but I also wanted to just show you two more quick examples, like written form, just to really nail it down. Um, so this is actually our workflow mapping spreadsheet, which is um, a resource inside our HoneyBook course that we have that really allows you to just brainstorm and map out your client experience before creating anything in HoneyBook. Because the thing about automations, um, and you'll see here is the automation that I'm going to walk you through, is you actually need to have the assets created before plugging them into an automation. Now they could be drafted. Of course, you could just create a smart file, name it brochure, and then build it out later. 
But what I find is that using a spreadsheet or a document just allows you to really let the thoughts flow and then you can write out in front of you, see, okay, I have to create this many smart files. I have to create, write this many emails, et cetera. So here we just have, okay, here are all the steps that are gonna happen. What is happening in that step and what items do I have to create to make it come to life? And then of course, when is it happening and does it need approval, yes or no? So just walking through this, this is just a simple um, sample inquiry workflow. When the client fills out the contact form, you can send an email to them to book a consultation call with your service brochure. This is gonna happen zero days after activating the workflow, meaning when they inquired, and it needs approval. Um, so that's because maybe for this, you wanna have approval before you just send your brochure or your scheduler to anyone. Maybe you'll also have an email template that's, hey, it's actually not a good fit for X, Y, Z reason. Um, but you can also have this go out automatic and then send that later as well. So here you're going to need to build a scheduler for the consultation call. You're going to have to write the email that goes out and then design the brochure. Just an example. Then um, you can have two email follow-up emails that go out after that. So as soon as that step is sent, then um, say 48 hours after no response, you want to go ahead and send a, hey, just checking in. Do you get a chance to check out the brochure, etc.? I always recommend having follow-up emails as needs approval because HoneyBook does not know if you have been in contact with them. Maybe you're chatting in the DMs. Maybe they responded and said, I'm not interested. You don't want to send a follow-up email to someone all the time. So this at least allows you to get that notification like, hey, there's a follow-up email waiting for you. Do you wanna go ahead and approve it and send it or do you wanna skip it? So you can have follow-up emails after, then say you have the consult call with the client and then want to send the proposal if it's a good fit. Then after you go ahead and send the proposal, you can have follow-up emails triggering after that. Of course, approve before sending. Um, you can always have tasks to archive leads. Maybe it's 14 days after they inquired, so you make sure you're not making your project pipeline clutter up. Um, and then maybe you have just a task to countersign a proposal and apply the booking workflow after they've signed their contract. Maybe when they sign their contract, you send a welcome email. And um, so you can see just how helpful it is to brainstorm either in a spreadsheet or on paper. And then I wanna bring you through the actual living workflow to show you what that looks like. So I'm just gonna quickly run you through this. Again, we have so many um, tutorials on HoneyBook on our channel that go into depth about automations and a whole um, playlist on smart files. So I might just go through this a little bit quick just so you get the holistic approach. But note, we have other resources for you, whether it's on our channel or in our course that goes like granular into each step. Okay, so we went through the workflow mapping spreadsheet. So you can just get a visual. Now let me show you what this actually looks like in the automation section. So when I come into here, you can see I can click into each of these modules and this is, I'm not exactly sure how many steps this is, maybe like around 10. So the first step would be immediately after the automation is activated. So immediately when someone inquires, then it sends the smart file, the brochure, with the contact form autoresponder zero days after this automation is activated. Now, what does that email say? Thanks so much for reaching out. I'm super excited about the potential of serving you. Attaches my service and pricing guide. If you wanna move forward, you can uh, book a consultation. Now, also in the automations, it's not showing up blue, but in the actual email, it would show up blue. And when you click on here, this is what the scheduler looks like. Um, and then the brochure is linked at the bottom. So I wanna make a note about this as well. You can see that this is the require approve before sending. So you can decide, do I want this to go automatic or do I wanna approve it? I would say if you're brand new getting into automations, it's always good to have almost everything as approved before sending so that you can just kind of get used to the idea of what is going out with my automations and you can at least click and approve that button to make sure you want it to actually go. 
as you get more used to your automations, you might find yourself turning those off because you're like, you know what? It can automatically send the welcome email or the 30 days before hype up email, etc. Okay, so you can see um, all the different actions you could do. Send an email, create a task, send a smart file, brochure, questionnaire, the smart file template that you choose if it's sending a smart file, choosing the email. Now, I also say when you are mapping out your process, you want to make sure you're using naming conventions. So I always do the service dash 010203 dash and then the name of that email. So when I'm setting up this automation, it's also very clear where every single email is it just makes your life easier. Um, and then zero minutes, hours, days, weeks, before or after, and then you can see all the trigger options. So there's a lot that you can do here, but take this video as inspiration. All the little nuggets of ideas I've given you, what can you start with? So maybe that's literally just sending a brochure and two follow-up emails. Don't feel like you have to automate your whole business overnight. It is not realistic. Okay, so immediately after the automation is activated, it's gonna send the brochure. 48 hours after that, send a follow-up. 24 hours after that, send a follow-up. Obviously, approve before sending. A task to have the consult call with the client. So after that's done, you check it off and your next task is draft and send the proposal. After you send that, after you check that off, it's gonna have the 48 hour and 24 hour um, follow-ups after the proposal, just saying, hey, have you had a chance to look over the proposal? Do you have any questions? This could also be a great time if you expire proposals, that uh, you could say, hey, your proposal is expiring in 24 hours or something like that. A task to archive the lead, a welcome email after the contract is signed. You can also do after the first payment is made. Um, you can also do after all required signatures are signed. So not just maybe you have multiple people, bride and groom sign um, the contract and you wanna make sure it doesn't send the white welcome email unless every single party has signed it. There are so many different options to make this super customized to your needs. Um, 30 days to project, sending them an email, the day before the project, sending them the email, and then 14 days after the project, sending them the testimonial request, and then the last task, just reminder to move the project to complete. Now note about this as well, if anything is triggering via project date, like you saw those last few things, I wanna show you where to find that. Okay, so here we are in John Smith's project. This is just like a sample portal. Um, and as long as you have in the details section the project date, then that is how those automations will trigger according to the project date. So I just wanna make sure there was a note of that. Okay, so I've shown you just examples of what client automations even look and feel like in HoneyBook. Now, let me just show you through um, a couple of the smart files so you can see kind of what that looks like. So in the um, smart files, you can create contracts, invoices, proposals, questionnaires, custom smart files. Um, and so just showing you through like that one page brochure, I think mine had the multi-page, whatever it is. Um, you can have a brochure that just has your services, your pricing, all that good stuff, book a call. You can have a proposal template, right? You can have, um, so contract, invoice, payment, cheers, make this fun, add a little personality. And then also just another example, say um, photography style guide. So if you're a photographer and you want to really nurture your client, get them excited for the session, um, then you can send a style guide. Maybe it's right when they sign the contract, maybe it's 14 days before their session. Whatever you wanna do, you can see the power that Smart Files has um, to really deck out your client experience and make your life so much easier. The other thing with this too is maybe you already have your style guides built out in a PDF and you really love how they look and feel. You can even attach that to the email template so it's still automating the process. Um, that way it's just saying, hey, here's your style guide, attach this email, it's a PDF, they still get that 
nurture of your client experience. So now we went through the smart files. That's just one piece that you could plug into automations. Then you can also plug in emails, right? So this is where you're going to create a new email. We talked about naming conventions already, and you can write what that email is. Um, you can add your email signature, the client first name, really make it personal. Um, even a note about this, if you are someone and we get this from a lot of our clients who's like, I want it, my brand to still be personal. I don't want everything to be canned. I want to let them know I'm a real human behind the screen. So what I actually suggest is in our autoresponder, um, our contact form autoresponder, which isn't automatic, we always check before sending details and information. I actually have a line that says insert personal details and I have it highlighted. So that way I know, okay, here I always just want to insert like a personal note. Oh, whoops, I don't have it as um, yellow. I have it as highlighted yellow and then I delete it and then just like put in a nice note like, oh, congrats on launching your business. Or um, if it's someone where we worked in the same industry before, I'll be like, we've worked with a bunch of different photographers or wedding venues, etc. And it really just gives that ex goes that extra mile for your client while still saving you so much time because you have this amazing base to work off of. Um, so you're gonna have smart files that you could plug into automations, emails that you could plug into automations, and then also your schedulers that you will put into the emails that this will be a piece of really saving you so much time because you're not coordinating your schedules back and forth. So when we go back to here, you can see smart files, emails, the tasks you create inside the workflow. Some of the emails will have schedulers in there. Um, and so it's definitely a lot of work up front. I will say that to automate your business and automate your client experience. But when you do the work up front, it pays off tenfold in the future because it's saving you so much time and nurturing your client really well at the same time, which is a total win-win if you ask me. So I hope this video was helpful for you and giving you tangible examples of how you can actually automate your client experience within Honeybook. Not only is this gonna save you so much time and energy, but it's gonna nurture your clients really well. That's a win-win if you ask me. So like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if you say, okay, great, now I know how to automate my client experience, but it just seems like a lot of work, we are here to support you if you are ever interested in us actually building out that entire process for you. But if you are looking to DIY and you really just need more training on HoneyBook, how to use smart files, how to set up your contact form, how to create schedulers, every single bell and whistle, we actually have an entire HoneyBook course. I'll make sure to link it in the description below if you want to check it out. And if you have any other HoneyBook questions, we are here to serve you through our channel. I want to make sure that I am teaching you things that you actually have questions about. So if you want us to make a specific video on anything about HoneyBook at all, please leave a comment below and let us know what you'd love to learn next. If you like this video and you thought it was helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because there are so many other HoneyBook tutorials. With with that, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.